Hi YouTube, hopefully everyone's uh, staying healthy. I just wanted to make a quick follow-up video to address a few things that have come up in the comments. Uh, if you haven't watched the video um, about the fiber, please watch it now before watching this one, otherwise this isn't probably going to make a whole lot of sense. Um, if you did watch the first video, I appreciate you watching. I was not expecting uh, that many views. Um, but uh, because there were that many views, obviously there's a lot of comments. And uh, I figured I would take the time to address some of them because there seems to be a lot of themes showing up and what people want to know or what people are unhappy about. Um, my YouTube channel is a hobby. I don't, uh, I try to make videos when I have time and I do things that I find interesting. Um, lately I've been out of work due to the COVID-19 situation, so I've got a little bit more time on my hands, so I'm going to try to do uh, a, a bit more than I have. Uh, anyways, so uh, let's get started. All right, point number one. What are the specs of my PFSense server? So, uh, quite simply, it's a Xeon E3 uh, 1220. It's got four gigs of RAM and a four gig SSD. Right now I've been using, well, prior to the video, I was just using the onboard uh, dual ethernet for, for WAN and LAN connections. But uh, since then, obviously you've seen the video, I've added the card and now uh, I'm using uh, one of the SFP ports for my WAN and then one of the RJ45 LAN ports for my LAN. So here's a fun one. You guys are all uh, shocked and angry and upset that I accidentally plugged in the card when the machine was on. So that's my bad. I forgot to unplug the power and it was before I started the, the unit was shut off. But uh, for whatever reason, as soon as I plugged in the PCIe uh, card there, it powered on. And at this point, I still don't know why. So anyways, I've turned, I've always unplug it now, which you should always do anyways. But um, Obviously, I did not uh, take that precaution. Um, some people are saying that that probably fried the card. Well, the card I did test in another machine, um, just a normal server. I did connect it um, to one of my switches uh, with the SFP modules, and it works fine. So the card itself is fine. It just did not work for did not work with the uh, the GPON SFP module. All right, moving along. Why did I use a ribbon cable? Well. To put it quite simply, it was cheap and fast. In Canada, buying stuff online, especially server parts, uh, especially if they're used, they take forever to get here. Most of them have to cross the border because there isn't as much of a availability in Canada versus the United States. And I just wanted to try this now. So I did Amazon Prime, got the two day shipping and it was eight bucks. Now you'll be happy to know, now that this all works, I have actually ordered and replaced the ribbon cable with a proper super micro riser which was intended for this case and this motherboard so we're all good it's done properly now no need to panic anymore okay so the next question is it stable how hot does it run well it's been 100 percent stable since uh i made the original video which is just over a month ago and um, I'm happy to report that uh, through the diagnostic information, I was able to find out the temperature of uh, the module, which was around 33 degrees Celsius, which to me is well within standards. I'm not worried about anything overheating or burning out or anything like that. So next question, why did I do it? Well, to put it quite simply, I'm a huge nerd and I found out it might be possible, so I wanted to put it to the test. Um, is there any huge real benefits? Not really. Um, I believe that the super micro server that is running PFSense is going to be a little bit more reliable than relying on the, uh, the more consumer grade ONT provided by the ISP. But other than that, I mean, there's not any re real reason to it. Oh, my cat decided to hop, drop by, go down. <sighs> Seriously, stick your butt in my face. Well, I'll continue talking about the ONT. So a few other people said, why can't you just bridge the ONT and then just use it that way? And the truth is, is it, it, it was bridged. It comes bridged from the ISP. What they normally want you to do with this is they, they, take, they, have, they provide you the ONT and then you plug that into their own router via Ethernet, RJ45. Um, so considering all that, 
yes, my PFSense uh, router did have a public WAN IP. It didn't have a uh, internal IP or anything like that, and it worked fine. So again, I had no reason to do this except for I was a huge nerd, and I still am. I don't know why I said I was, because that's probably not going to change anytime soon. Okay, here's a big one. I've been asked multiple times, did I clean the fiber? And I've been reminded multiple times that you should clean the fiber. Well, I hate to say this, but I did not clean the fiber. I didn't know that was a thing until after making this video. But luckily, thank thanks to all my, uh, all of my viewers that are very happy to educate me when I am wrong about something, um, I now know that you should. And I know that not only can using dirty fiber, whether it be like contaminated, well, I guess not contaminated, but what happens is you can get dust, uh, dust on where the connection point is, and that can cause issues for not only my own equipment, but on the other side of the line as well, because it can cause issues regarding um, reflection and, and other things that I don't fully understand. But the point is, is I must urge you to educate yourself, unlike me, um, on, on, a, on cleaning fiber before you start meddling with your ISP stuff. Otherwise, it could piss them off. And that's probably not a good thing. Uh, I, I should mention that I did clean it after the fact, once I uh, did a little bit more research. Uh, obviously it was working fine, but I figured what's the harm in just double checking. All right, the next one is people are upset that I don't have a rack. I am very aware of the problem. Um, a long time ago I actually did have a full, or, well actually it wasn't a full height, it was a half height fully enclosed uh, cabinet that was in my parents' basement probably about 10 years ago before I went out on my own. And uh, at that point I decided that I wasn't gonna have servers anymore, I didn't need it, so I got rid of it. And then the last couple of years I kind of got bored with everything else that was going on and started up on this hobby again. And uh, now I've got a whole mess of equipment over there and uh, I need a cabinet again. So don't worry, it's in the works, it is coming. Okay. So we're going to move on to my comment about 700 megabits per second is no good. Well, I don't remember the exact number, but it was somewhere around there. So I admit that I am very lucky to have access to this kind of internet connection. And I was simply referring to the fact if you pay for one gig internet and you're only getting 700 megabits, that's only like 70% of what you're paying for. So it is no good in that aspect. The reality is it's amazing compared to what a lot, a large portion of the world has access to. Um, so anyways, having said that, I uh, am very grateful for what I have and I'm not trying to rub it in, in any, into anyone that is not able to get this kind of connection. Um, now, one of the most important fa uh, questions I get is how was I assigned an IP? So. Forgive me, I'm going to read my uh, comments on this a little bit because it's kind of long. Um, but anyways, based on the comments that I've got from all you viewers from around the world, many ISPs are way more restrictive than mine is. Uh, I know for a fact up here in Canada that there's the two largest uh, fiber to the home providers, which are Bell and TELUS. Uh, one's East Coast and one's West Coast mostly. Um, this is possible. So in the case of Bell, and I really don't have much information on Bell. Uh, except for the fact that people with the Home Hub 3000, um, it does have apparently an SFP module inside, which can be accessed by removing like a little cover or something. And people have successfully removed that module and plugged it into switches or routers or whatever they, uh, they feel like. So again, I don't have much information about Bell, but there's tons on DSL reports. Same goes for TELUS actually. So in the case of TELUS, which is my ISP, um, I must emphasize the fact I did not buy the SFP module. This is not a module that I just picked up on the internet and plugged the, uh, the fiber into. This is actually a module provided by the ISP. So what they're doing for new installations is they're providing the single all-in-one router, um, which does have the SFP port on it. And that's essentially their, their gateway. Um, and then they're interfacing that uh, with the SFP module. So Quite simply, in order to get my setup changed out from the way it was, was I just called them and asked them to do it. And they surprisingly 
uh, agreed and sent a technician out and they basically removed my ONT and replaced it with the SFP module or as they call it SFP ONT. So if you're with TELUS and you have the Nokia, the white uh, ONT that um, is basically the first step that plugs into the router or your router or the router they provided. So if you have that white box, you can call them and say that you want it switched out um, with the SFP ONT. Now, having said that, I don't know how, I, I, I'm assuming it varies from person to person depending on who you talk to. So I don't know how easy it's gonna be for, for just anyone. I just got really lucky. So it's really important to note that with basically every ISP, there's gonna be some sort of authentication needed to connect. In my case, the SFP module itself, which is provided by the ISP, is also registered with the ISP. So that's one of the things the TELUS technician did when he came out, is he had to essentially deactivate my, my old ONT and then activate the SFP module in its place. And uh, after that, it was just as simple as plugging it in. I didn't need to do any sort of configuration in PFSense aside from uh, just assigning that the SFP port to my WAN interface. And after I did that, after a few minutes, it picked up an IP via DHCP. So for me, it was dead easy. It required virtually no configuration at all aside from that very, very simple step of changing which interface um, or which port uh, the WAN interface was assigned to. So having said that, I understand uh, that there's a little bit of upset about my thumbnail for the video saying, connect your FTTH fiber to the home to your PFSense router. Um, I get that that does not apply to everyone. And for that, I'm sorry, I was a little bit ignorant. I didn't realize how restrictive most ISPs are. Um, I was just basing it off of the information that is in my own country with Bell and TELUS. So again, I apologize for that. And if you're upset, that's fine, that's your right. That's what the thumbs down button's for. All right, and then last but not least, um, people are criticizing me for using the browser-based speedtest.net. Um, in addition to that, they're saying uh, maybe I should have used Google Drive as a speed test or uh, fast.com. Um, so we're gonna do those and uh, hopefully that makes you happy. That's how we're gonna end the video. Okay, like in my previous video, I had some issues with resources uh, with the screen capturing, so we're going to just uh, record the screen again. Um, this is the speedtest.net app, so we're going to give this a shot. This is available on the Microsoft Store. So there's our download speed test. And then upload speed test. What I have noticed is my results definitely vary. Um, there are some times I can hit uh, 940, which is the advertised speed. Um, yes, they, uh, my ISP says one gigabit internet up to 940 megabits per second. Does not make much sense to me. Uh, let's try, let's try testing with the competitor ISP. Let's see what kind of speed we get. slightly higher ping and definitely does not look like the results are going to be as good. I'm not going to bother letting that finish. Uh, let's try one more. Why don't we try Delta Cable and that's another smaller ISP. Ooh, much higher ping. Decent speeds. Anyways, you get the point. I think that's enough testing. Uh, the other one we're going to do is fast.com. Uh, again, my results vary pretty significantly on fast.com. Like, that isn't really the best result ever. And again, that's not meant to be offensive. But today it looks like this is kind of where our results are sitting on fast.com. So anyways, um, I did actually do a test with uh, Google Drive, but uh, I wasn't really able to get much higher than 500 uh, megabits per second, so I didn't bother showing it. 
Um, but uh, I guess the point is, is the results can vary so much uh, depending on what the load of these servers is at the time of testing, um, not to mention uh, any network congestion or anything else that could occur. All right, we're going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. If you uh, like this video, please like and subscribe, and I will continue to try and make uh, interesting videos for you to watch.